Grace and peace, everybody, and welcome in to this last part of this five-part series in Sabbath School Study Group. We've been talking about why interpretation is needed, and we've clearly defined this is talking about spiritual interpretation, using the gift of God, using the mind and the intellect to make the word understandable, and not to twist it to something that I want you to think it is, or something that I think it should say, but rather clarify it so that it can be clearly, thus saith the Lord. We're gonna talk about presuppositions in this study. So we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we would be overcomers and that we would transcend all presuppositions so that we can see your purpose, the pure word, what you're saying to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Presuppositions, supposing, but then presupposing, bringing something into the conversation or something into the the situation from the outside or from the previous. It's something that we all do. You know, if I go to a dinner, If I go to someone's house for dinner and my expectations of what's going to happen that dinner, they're going to be shaped and molded by every other dinner that I've been to. So if you do that as a matter of simply going to somebody's house to eat for a dinner party or or a dinner after church, we definitely do that when we come to read this book. We bring our suppositions with it. And the Lord understands that. He's not afraid of it, but he also admonishes us. He admonishes us to, to never let what you see get in the way of what he wants you to see. He's not telling you, you you should have never seen anything before. Well, that just happens. It's going to happen. But don't let what you have seen get in the way of what Jesus wants you to see. It actually happened here in the book of Luke chapter 24. Jesus comes back now. After he's raised from the dead, he comes back to visit his disciples who are now the apostles. And when he visits him here in verse 36, and as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, peace be unto you. It is no small coincidence that the first word, the very first word out of Jesus's mouth to his apostles is peace. His presence is always supposed to invoke peace. The same can be said about the word. When the word is in your life, one way you know the word is in your life and you are in the word is that you have peace. It doesn't mean that nothing's going on on the outside of the ship, but there's still peace in the vessel, in the storm. It doesn't mean that things won't be going wrong. It doesn't mean you won't be sick or you won't be in need, but it means that even while I'm sick and even while I'm in need, I still am at peace. So here he comes to them. First word, peace. Now watch what happens. Because now the suppositions kick in. In verse number 37, they were terrified and they were afraid and they supposed that they had seen a spirit. You ever um, said to the Lord or said, out, man, if I could just see him, I would believe that, he, I, you know, God, if I saw you, I believe you exist. These brothers actually see him. They've seen him before. They were with him for three and a half years. They see him again and their suppositions and their presuppositions override what's right in front of them. They see a ghost because that far as they know, when people die, they don't come back. And if they do come back, somebody told me that's a ghost. So their presuppositions kick in and it overrides what they actually see. If it happens to them, absolutely it happens to you and me. But what does Jesus do? I'm so grateful that he's always able to override our stuff, our mess, even our presuppositions. Because he says, behold now, down in verse 39, look, since y'all are all about looking, look at my hands, look at my feet, that it is I myself. But he doesn't stop there. Look at the mercy. Handle me and see. Touch and see for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. He is so good. He is so good. Remember when Mary comes to him and she goes out to touch him. He said, don't touch me yet because I had not gone. I haven't got the certification yet. I haven't verified with my father that the, that the sacrifice was clean. So he goes and and was the sacrifice. And yes, the sacrifice is accepted. And now he comes in the midst of the apostles. And here he says, oh, touch. In Psalm, David said, taste and see. But now here in Luke, Jesus says, touch and see that I am good. 
touch and see that the one that you saw die on a cross, because remember most of them weren't there, the one that you heard had died on a cross and you went to go look for him in the tomb, I'm back. I'm back and I'm blessed. And I need you to understand that because I need you all to have peace. I need you to be at rest. And what God now wants us to see today is to not let what we see around us and not let what we've heard before get in the way of what he's showing us right now. There are things he's calling you into right now, but you're stopping and you're holding back because of what's happened the other times. There are things that he's calling you to let go of and to release from, but you're afraid because of what may be over in this abyss or what may be left in this dark nothing that you think is nothing, but it's actually opportunity. It's actually new, not nothing. It's the new that he has for you, but you got to step out in faith, not trusting what you suppose but trusting what the word of God is showing you right now in front of you. These are realities. And these are things that we bring to the table when we come to understand the word. But it's good to know that through the spirit of his spirit and through the gift of interpretation, we can understand because that's what he promised. He said, I will send the comforter. I will send my spirit. And what would he do? He wants to lead us and guide us into all truth. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. Even beyond what you might see.